order to bring them back to the straight path. My dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Here we are today for what uh, for some people may very well be the last day of Ramadan. And I'm sure we will all look back and the month that one month ago seemed quite a challenge given the temperature at that time and the fact that the days are long. We will all look back now and, and say how very quickly the month has gone by and how in reality we were able to face these challenges, the physical challenges, alhamdulillah, and we are none the worse for it. And so this in itself, brothers and sisters, is one of the many lessons that Allah the Exalted teaches us in Ramadan every year. That we may be afraid of the hardships and sacrifices we have to make. But once we make the sacrifice, and once we're willing to engage in the struggle, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who will provide the way out and the ease for us. For everything that happens in the universe happens with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, with his knowledge and permission. So he knows about everything and everything happens because he has okayed it to happen. If he did not, it would not happen and could not happen. This is what the statement, Inna Allah ala kulli shayin qadir means. The statement that Allah has power over all things means that only what He wills or allows to happen will happen. And you and I may think that we have certain abilities and we have certain power, many things we can do. But even the things that are within our capability, brothers and sisters, even the simple tasks, that we take for granted and we think automatically we can do these things. We still only do them because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has permitted that. Allah tells us in the Quran that not even a leaf falls except with his knowledge and permission. So one of the lessons we should have learned and hopefully we will take this with us after Ramadan is that we should not be afraid what, at what we may perceive as hardships or difficulties in worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. One of the problems we have as human beings is that to begin with, we always like to take the easy way out. This is a, a natural human behavior. We want to do that which is easy. No one will ever choose to do that which is hard unless something is wrong with that person. But when it comes to worship of God, better yet, many of us are unwilling to make sacrifices and to face hardships. So as we go through the weeks and the months ahead of us out of Ramadan, that lesson that we have learned, that what seemed to be very difficult and challenging at the beginning, ended up being very easy in the end, something that was doable and manageable. We still had to face some difficulties, but at least by now we, we know that subhanAllah, we have done it, and we're none the worse. If anything, we're probably better because our morale is boosted. We have or should have greater inner peace and satisfaction. That we brave the weather and the long days and the hunger and the thirst. Why? Not for personal gains, not for anything material or physical, but for the worship and the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we should not, brothers and sisters, be afraid to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We should not be afraid of whatever perceived hardships there might be as we embark on service of Allah and worship of Allah. Because it is Allah who will make it easy for us or difficult. And Allah has told us in the Quran 
And there is no one who is truer in speech than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَمَنْ أَزْدَقُ مِنَ اللَّهِ قِيلًا There is no one who is truer in speech than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah has told us, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا SubhanAllah, brothers and sisters, we strive our whole lives to avoid facing difficulties. And when we fall into difficulties, we, we are stressed out into finding a way out. And Allah tells us in this ayah, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا And whoever is conscious of Allah, whoever has taqwa of Allah, Allah will provide a makhraj, an exit, a way out of your difficulties, that is. It is He who will provide. And on top of that, Allah says, وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ Two things. Almost every human being is stressed out about and worried about. One is, we don't like to be faced with hardships. And the other is, our financial stability. Allah says, for both, He says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا In terms of the difficulties, Allah says, Whoever has taqwa of him, consciousness of him, awareness, remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he will provide the way out of the difficulty. And in relation to the financial stress that people have, Allah says, وَيَرُزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبُ And he will provide sustenance from that person from means that that person cannot even imagine. Only the one, brothers and sisters, who has power over all things, who is in control of the universe, can promise this. So the very things we stress ourselves out about, subhanAllah, Allah has told us, look, there is a simple way of, 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 of doing this, of achieving inner peace. And that way is to raise our consciousness of Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala, which is exactly what Allah made fasting in Ramadan compulsory, subhanAllah. See how things connect. Allah says, لَعَلَّكُمْ تَتَّقُونَ When he talked about siyam, that perhaps you may develop taqwa, developing and nurturing a higher, higher level of awareness of Allah. And Allah says, it is that awareness that will result in him providing the, the makhraj, the way out of the difficulties that a person is faced with. In addition to that, he will provide sustenance. He will provide sustenance in all its forms, not just you know financial. Rizq is not just you know money or financial matters. Allah says he will provide rizq. Min from 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 whereby or from means that the person cannot even begin to imagine. So we should face, brothers and sisters, the coming months and, and weeks and months ahead of us with confidence and with firm resolve based on what we have experienced in Ramadan. We should have this firm resolve and this confidence, mashaAllah, that we're not afraid to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and we make no excuses for worshiping Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. See, we don't really see the results that Allah has promised because very often when we worship Allah, it is sort of with half-heartedly. Half-heartedly. But what Allah wants us to do is to give our fullest, full-heartedly. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, udkhuluhu fi silmi kafa. O you who believe, enter into silmuna bima'na al-islam. Embrace Islam kafa, wholeheartedly. Don't do so with hesitations. You do certain things and you don't want to do others. You accept some and you reject others. SubhanAllah, Allah says kafa. Embrace it wholeheartedly, completely. So we should embrace worship of Allah wholeheartedly and not be afraid of any difficulty for Allah the exalted will provide the way out and the ease for us. Let us not try brothers and sisters to control everything. This is one of our problems of our world today. 
we have reached a, a stage where we're trying to control everything. But we need to understand that yes, we have some control. We can make some plans. But we must realize that as we make these plans and we try to control some things, that Allah the Exalted is over us, the controller of the universe. So that if things don't go our way, we don't become stressed out and worried, anxious. Person can't sleep, they can't eat, they're irritable, they're angry. This is what happens when a person strives or believes he or she is in control of everything. But if we understand that Allah the Exalted is the controller of everything, He is Rabbul Alameen, the creator, the sustainer, and the controller of the universe. That's what Rabb means. Creator, controller, and uh, uh, creator, sustainer, and controller of the universe. So what we need to do, brothers and sisters, is to do what we can do and then leave Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to take care of his universe. We need to let go of this need that we feel to control everything. To have everything under control. And we plot and we plan. And when things don't go our way, what, what, what happens is people are stressed out. So it is with confidence. Not pride and arrogance, but with confidence and firm resolve that we should face the days and the weeks and the months of, ahead of us based on the lessons we have learned from Ramadan. As we face this month with no choice but to fast. And Alhamdulillah, Allah has shown us that what we might perceive as difficult, once you get into it wholeheartedly, willingly and freely, it is not so bad after all. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless all of us. May He accept all our good deeds that we have done during this month of Ramadan. May He help us to continue to do these good things. Of course, there is no expectation that we will continue to behave and to perform at the exact level as we were or are in Ramadan. Because even the Prophet ﷺ did not perform like this. Because whenever Ramadan, when the last 10 days of Ramadan came, he would work harder. Which means there had to be a difference between how he would, what he would do before the last 10 days and what he will do in the last 10 days. So that Aisha radiallahu anha could see a difference. So there's nothing wrong in sort of coming down a bit problem is very often for many people with the end of Ramadan everything ends their life after Ramadan is exactly as what it used to be before Ramadan began and so they worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala only in Ramadan while Ramadan brothers and sisters is intended to be a training ground for us, a period of training and nurturing for us. You know, subhanAllah, in spite of all the virtues that we were promised in the Quran and in the Sunnah about Ramadan, about fasting and praying and all that, actually these, these benefits are the byproduct of the real objectives of Ramadan and fasting in Ramadan. There are greater things than that, subhanAllah. And one of them is to receive that training that will enable us and help us after Ramadan to still be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to still perform, if not at the same level, but much better than when we began Ramadan. So may Allah bless us and may He cause us to be among those who, whose worship of Him was not only because of Ramadan, May he cause us to be among those who would have received this training and would have learned these lessons so that we will face our challenges in the future out of Ramadan with confidence that Allah the Exalted 
will give us ease once we show commitment, once we are dedicated, and once we are sincere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our fasting, our qiyam, our ruku, our sujood, our dua, wa saliha a'malina, all our good deeds, whether it is charity, kind words, good etiquette, good manners, feeding others, donating towards iftar, providing something for someone to break their fast, whatever it is, may Allah accept from us. And may He forgive for us our mistakes and shortcomings. And may He reward us for our efforts. And may He continue to bless us after Ramadan as He blessed us in Ramadan. أقول قولي هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم. Let me take this opportunity to wish all of you Eid Mubarak. كل عام وأنتم بخير. ونسأل الله تعالى أن يتقبل منكم ومنا جميعا. وأن يجمعنا في 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 شهر رمضان القادم بإذن. السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته. Of course, those who started Ramadan on Tuesday, one month ago. Eid is tomorrow, you have no choice. <laughs> and for those who started on Wednesday, maybe there is some possibility it could be on Friday, although I suspect that the whole world will probably be doing Eid tomorrow because the moon was born yesterday. And so I believe that there is enough time for it to be very easily visible sometime this evening somewhere. And so hopefully, we may have started on different days, but inshallah, we will all do it on the same day. So that's the reality. If you started on Tuesday, you have no choice. Eid is tomorrow. It's definitely not today. <laughs> and if you started on Wednesday, it could be tomorrow or it could be uh, Friday. So uh, stay tuned, inshallah. May Allah accept from all of us. And may He reward us for our efforts. And may He protect us from deviation and from following our desires. Aqulu qawli hadha. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa